One of the greatest growth opportunities financial brand leaders can capture is to bridge the empathy gap, both with account holders as well as with prospective account holders. In fact, the empathy gap was the subject of a recent keynote that I did at an industry event where I transformed the thinking of hundreds of financial brand leaders out on the East Coast. So how can you bridge the empathy gap at your bank, at your credit union, or at your fintech? Well, let's find out together on today's episode of the Banking on Digital Growth podcast. Greetings and hello, my name is James Robert Lay, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Banking on Digital Growth podcast. This episode is part of the Real Solutions series where we take real challenges from real leaders to transform them into real opportunities. And joining me for today's conversation is Jonathan Clay. Jonathan is a data analyst at Louisiana Federal Credit Union. Today, we're going to talk through how to navigate the complexities of change and transformation by bridging the empathy gap. Welcome to the show, Jonathan. It is great to share time with you today. Hey, thanks for having me. It's good to be back. Absolutely. And before we get into breaking through a roadblock in real time so that you can continue to move forward on your journey of growth, what is good in your world right now? What is positive personally or professionally? It is always your pick to get started. You know, I always lean into the personal. Um, so I'll just stick with that because that's that's on brand for me. I'm just excited for a new year and fresh perspective. It's it's exciting that as cliche as it might sound, um, the new year presents a fresh start and it um, you can change some of those habits and move forward to the goals that you set out for yourself. And that's what I'm looking forward to doing this year. Absolutely, new year, new start, new opportunities, but also there might be some obstacles that stand in the way of those opportunities. But as you and I have worked over the years, yeah. every obstacle, is in fact an opportunity. It's just the way that we perceive that obstacle. And I would say I get so much energy working with financial brand leaders to help them transform their perspective so that they can transform the op the obstacle to then capture the opportunity. What's an obstacle right now thinking about the new year, new new growth opportunities? What's an obstacle that is standing in your way that we could talk and break through together? Um, I think one of the obstacles that I I know that I'm facing uh, is when you're doing something well and it's working, um, there's there's a desire to change, to continue to grow. And I think that when there's no case, I guess, for lack of a better term, to make the change, it's really, really difficult to get all the people who have the say so in the room to agree on it because everyone has their own perspective. Mm. And um, so that's one of the things that I'm um, I'm doing. I'm on a team um, at work where we're looking at all of our channels and all the things that we offer to our membership. And we we have amazing successes um, in those channels. But as you start to look at your competitors and not even competitors, just, just lookalikes in the industry and how you want to grow, you have to start looking at the things that you're doing and just because it's working, um, can it be improved upon? Right. So the obstacle, it sounds like, is what I actually opened up with. It's a matter of perspective. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. Is, when it comes to change and transformation, there are four steps there are four levels for human change and transformation that i would want to walk you through and walk walk those who are watching or listening through so they can think about their own unique situation here um, coming back to this point of perspective it's about sight it's about vision it's it's how we perceive it's how we see the world so you're bringing a certain perspective your team has a certain perspective and all of that is rooted based upon their previous experiences agree or disagree Absolutely agree for sure. Okay, so we're all bringing a different perspective based upon our previous experiences. So we're all seeing things a little bit different. Step yeah. number one is getting everyone on the same page, seeing the same thing. Otherwise, if we're seeing things, even if it's two different perspectives, that's going to be a challenge. Now you yeah. add a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh perspective, and then it increases the complexity which increases the confusion when when we're staying in a state like that as you know and we've talked over the years you're going to end in some type of chaos so it right. all comes back to seeing 
things the same. Thinking about your situation here, and we don't have to get into too much detail about that. Why do you feel there might be a lack of perspective or different perspectives brought by others? Not that one is right or one is wrong. I don't think we ever approach it as a right or wrong. Perspective is perspective based upon previous context and framing of experiences. But why might there be a lack of alignment that could be an impediment to future growth right now? I think that the perspective, uh, the difference in the different perspectives that we're facing is because everyone has a different responsibility um, as it relates to the organizational goals. We want to optimize one of our digital channels in, in regards to our, our online banking, if, that, if that's the obstacle we're facing. Well, that deals with maybe four different departments right. and they all have a different book of business that they're responsible to. And so it's very easy for us, myself included, to only see it from the perspective that I'm responsible for and how that change in the short term can affect that, good or bad. And so you want to be protective of that. You want to uh, uniquely bring your perspective to the table and hope that everyone gets it. Um, but I think that with the the bigger obstacle, or I guess the biggest thing is we can all have a different perspective, but we all have to have the same goal. Yes. And I think that that's the that's the kicker. It's it's really realizing that the conversation isn't about whose perspective is more right and wrong. I, I'm, I would venture to say probably everybody's perspective correct because they have a responsibility that is unique to them or their team. But the goal is all the same. That can't be they can't be multiple goals for the same thing. It's it is the goal is to better the organization and the membership and how they interact with the organization. So I think that that is the part that um, can prove difficult because you can have the wrong conversation. And by wrong conversation, I mean, we're not talking about perspective, we're actually talking about the goal. So once we get the common goal in place, then we can, we can decipher the perspective and get to where we need to go. So it's actually interesting. You're, 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 you're thinking and, and that's the second step in human transformation. You see things differently. And when you begin to see things differently, that's going to then influence your thinking. So when you see different, you're going to think different. But what you've done in just this quick five minute conversation is you've already shifted the perspective from it's not about me. It's not about what everyone else thinks. That's an right. internal perspective. And you use a very interesting word here. You use, you know, we want to protect um, like what we're responsible for. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there is a little bit of maybe internal competition, uh, <laughs> shuffling and whatnot. Yeah. But on the flip side, if we transform that competitive perspective into, uh, a mindset of collaboration, it's the collaboration that leads to growth. I heard something on the point of collaboration versus cooperation. Cooperation is when you're working well together. And I think everyone watching and listening would agree you, we have to work well together um, right. if we want to make progress. The difference between cooperation and collaboration, though, is collaboration. Of course, you need cooperation for collaboration to work well together. But but the end state of collaboration is you're now not just working well together, you're co-creating together. Yeah. And to bring yeah. your thinking back into this, it's not about us. It's about the external perspective, the perspective yeah. of the member or of the account holder. And how often do we or do we not bring the external perspective of the account holder into our internal decision-making goal-driven processes? Right. Um, and that is, I would say, oftentimes the big breakthrough that we can experience. And you've experienced this yourself. I mean, think back on the digital secret shopping studies that you have been oh, a yeah. part of over the years and how you bring in that objective external and they're not even members. These are prospective members or prospective account holders who do not have a relationship with the, the organization. And so there's no emotive affinity or tie. So it's right. even more objective. I mean, think back, how has seeing the external perspective helped to influence your thinking differently once you understand what others are experiencing and feeling, and I think that's the key point here, what they're feeling through a digital journey. I think that you bring up a really good point by 
bringing me back to that place. I think that that experience and that exercise actually forever changed how I approach uh, collaborative projects for uh, the sake of conversation. Um, the reality situation is if you think about the buying journey as it relates to the consumer, uh, it changes the individual perspective. So I might want to do something a specific way because it's comfortable to me and my experiences. However, what I can account for is that my unique perspective is not the entire world's perspective. Correct. Um, so when we went through those mystery shops and we heard people who look like the customers that we serve, but have absolutely no connection, say what's important to them, you get to hear something that you don't get to hear every day. The reality of the situation is, is well, you may have three or four different departments in the room. We all work for the same company. So we have some form of a semblance of thinking similarly. You have someone come in from the outside and then they share their perspectives like, oh, wow, that's a fresh take I never thought about. So that one exercise that we did however many odd years ago has kind of shaped how I how I pitch ideas when we're working together collaboratively. And so one exercise that I try to employ, I try my best to employ, maybe I'm not the greatest at it at all times, but first of all is listen to everyone share. Um, listen to what they're saying and listen for key points that might be them either speaking from personal experience or from the experience of them working with members and, and, and understanding something that I don't have um, experience or privy knowledge to, but it, I ultimately try to bring it back to, hey, we're all, as at the end of the day, we're all consumers somewhere. How do you best want to do business? What um, actions or features or whatever word you want to fill a blank there with, have you seen at another place that you did a, a buying journey with that you like that actually made a great experience for me? It was seamless. I will love that in my everyday life. And so I try to bring that um, the shopping cart analogy that we use when we talk about, you know, Amazon, you, you know, you want something, you have the money for it, but you're not ready to commit Yeah, that perspective and, and being able to tell that to our, 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 our creative team is like, Hey, this is, this is how people are buying these days. We live in a day and age where it takes one click and it's at your door in two days for most, in most cases. So how can we get as close to that as possible and really listening to that what our customers are saying, like, how can we match what they're saying as it relates to us, but what's realistic for us? I think that's the other part about it is even if you want to do something because it's great and it seems easy, you can't do everything at once. You can't do everything that everyone's doing because then what's the point of, like, there's no individuality in that. So um, right. it's really getting hyper-focused in what you're trying to do and the best way to solve a problem for your members. And and I think that comes back the best way to solve the problem for the members or solve the problem for the account holder because if you think about what you're 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 explaining here the internal quote unquote conflict getting aligned around a common goal that's bigger than us as individuals whether they be individuals as as human beings or individuals as a team because let's just say there's three four different key stakeholders i.e. teams that are a part of this experience and coming back to the idea of optimizing the online banking experience. Um, how often do we bring the fifth element, uh, great movie, by the way, bring the fifth element, the fifth key stakeholder into that dialogue, into that discussion. And that is the voice of the member. Or that is the voice of the account holder. Um, and they don't necessarily have to be involved in the day-to-day decision-making but right. I think we should provide a forum to where we can get that feedback, can get that response. And so even thinking about digital secret shopping from an external buying journey perspective, there also might be a way to look at digital secret shopping from an online banking back end servicing, quote unquote, perspective. And this yeah. idea of expectation or experience setting from other experiences, digital experiences, to use your example, Amazon, well, that is going to directly influence how we perceive our other digital experiences. Um, right. It's a benchmarking, if you will. And so if we come back to these four different steps for human transformation to guide human transfer transformation first and foremost internally so that we can guide the transformation externally, we see things differently through learning asking good questions, listening, learning through observation. That's going to then influence our thinking. We get get really clear on a common goal that's bigger than our own individual selves or our own individual teams. But that brings us to the third point, which 
when I ask leaders, what happens when you see different? What happens when you think different? 98, 99% say, well, we're going to act different. We're going to be different. We're going to do different. I challenge them respectfully. And I'm like, no, you're not. How many times do you have the knowledge that you need to do something different, but you're continuing with the status quo? And they kind of pause and I'm like, listen, I'll be the first one to tell you that there, are, I know there are things that I need to do, but I'm choosing not to take action because of one thing, to bridge the gap between the thought and the action comes down to feeling and emotion. So you see different mm -hmm. than you think different. You think different does not mean you're going to do different. To do different, you're feeling your emotive state, your inspiration, yeah. if you will, has to be greater. And I think that comes back to, the, you know, looking to the outside once again, if we can yeah. make that inspiration an external driven inspiration. And I don't use the word motivation because motivation is like a muscle. Motivation is going to eventually fail and we're going to fall back to previous state of what we know and how we operate because it feels safe. It feels secure. So you see, think, feel different. And then that's where you, you're going to continue to do different, being mindful of not falling back on the previous mind state, the status quo of what you know. So thinking about your situation here, see, think, feel, then do or act, be different. Where's the greatest opportunity in your situation to continue to guide others internally for to, to capture new opportunities? I think it's in the field. Um, I think it's understanding uh, that people actually do buy with their heart. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a unique thing to discuss specifically when dealing with finances mm -hmm. because at a at a baseline, everybody would say people purchase things with, based on how they feel or what they're going through or what's important to them or what they're responsible to. But it's so easy to fall back into a business perspective and like, oh, we, we don't want to talk necessarily about feelings or mm -hmm. emotions. In reality, you kind of have to, not necessarily in everything that you're marketing to your consumers, or and maybe you should. I, I, obviously, I know that you should, but I'm saying... But changing the perspective on talking about the feelings of the consumer, I think is the way, the area we could experience the greatest level of growth because you have to understand that we're looking at it from a business perspective, but they're not looking at it from that. I, I, for me, the challenge is it's been many, many years since I've sat in front of members as a teller and had the day-to-day -day interaction, but I've shared this story before. I think even on the podcast here, um, I had a, a single mom with three kids who was going through something difficult and her kids wanted um, all the coolest toys at the time. And she was crying and I was telling her, ma'am, your kids are not going to remember that you got them the latest toy. They're going to remember that you showed up and that you cared enough to get what you could. So don't stress yourself out trying to get something you can't. And so for me, the challenge is I'm not in those conversations anymore day to day. And my hope is that I never lose that perspective as I continue in my own day to day because mm -hmm. I'm not faced with that with that conversation. But what I can do is look to friends and family around me and listen to their struggles. And that's actually where most of my ideas come from. I'll see a situation that I'm hearing someone talk about, whether it's related to um, industry or not. I'm like, hey, what would that look like if we could take that on and we try to meet that need for our members? Um, I'm fortunate enough that I've been able to uh, get some of my family and friends to convert with us, even if we're not their primary FI, just to find a way to add value to their sure. lives. And so listening to them talk through different things that they have, at the end of the day, it's not about whether or not they have the money. Those things are going to come and go. It's yeah. really how they feel and how they felt through the process. So that's, to answer your question, I think that's where we can have the greatest growth is understanding that just as much as we feel strongly about our unique perspective about this book of business, you feel that way because you contributed something to it. So if you can understand that for your perspective with your peers, then how do we get that perspective for our members and understand that they're coming to us with their buying journey based off of their unique perspective and what they're feeling? That's, Does that make sense? That makes total sense. And I think it's it takes courage to lean into that because it is almost very unnatural to talk about feelings and emotions, particularly through the lens of financial services. I wrote about this in Banking on Digital Growth. You have the banker's brain and then you have the consumer's brain and they, they look at the world very differently. But to your point, financial decisions are a lot of times emo emotively driven, um, mm -hmm. emotionally driven. And if we can remember that, that creates a tremendous growth opportunity. So for those who are watching, those who are listening, 
think about your own situation. Where is there an opportunity to help others internally, first and foremost, see, think, feel, so that they can continue to do different, so that you can take that same idea externally when it comes to members and account holders. Where can you help them see, think, feel, so that they can then do different on their own financial journeys? John, this has been a great conversation. For someone who wants to connect with you and continue to expand the digital growth community, what's the best way for them to reach out and say hello to you? Um, I am on LinkedIn. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not the greatest at checking it quickly, but I do check and I keep up with it. Uh, you can shoot me an email and, um, you know, however we got to do it, we'll, we'll connect. I love helping people. So obviously I'm sitting here talking about feelings and banking. So I'm kind of a guy that's going to talk to you about how you feel about it and Let's figure it out if we can help each other get through it. That's right. Connect with Jonathan, learn with Jonathan, grow with Jonathan. Jonathan, thanks again for joining me for another episode of the Banking on Digital Growth podcast to break through real problems for real people so that they can continue to move forward and capture new opportunities on their journeys of growth. This has been a lot of fun today. Thank you, James Roberts. It's great. As we wrap up another episode of the Banking on Digital Growth podcast, where we've taken a real challenge from a real leader to transform that into a real opportunity, I have a question for you. Where might you be able to help others, to help guide others on your team to bridge the empathy gap by helping them to see, think, and feel different about the future so that they can be inspired to act, to be, to do different? And as a result, together, you can create an even bigger, better, brighter future for your account holders. One thing I am confident of that will help you to see, think, and even feel different, that will help maximize your future growth at your bank, credit, and your fintech is one of our website secret shopping studies. This is the fastest way to learn where you're losing millions in loans or deposits for a key product line in less than 30 days and for less than $5,000. Plus, I guarantee that if a website secret shopping study can't find at least $5,000 worth of value for you that you could either create or capture in the next 12 months, you're going to get a 100% refund. So text me, 832-549-5792 to schedule your 100% risk-free website secret shopping study. That's 832-549-5792. Text me right now, and my team will show you where you're losing millions in loans and deposits in less than 30 days with no risk to you. Until next time, and as always, be well, do good and make your bed.